If you're watching this, chances are you know anime. But when the average person on the street hears the word anime, they probably imagine characters with big heads, bigger and weirder hair, and of course, enormous eyes. But did you ever wonder why they're like that? Beautiful transition, I know. Let's talk about anime eyes. First, let's talk about the tropes you probably already know. Even in shows or movies with more realistic styles like Paranoia Agent or Akira, eyes are way bigger than anything we'd see in real life. Across the board, anime animators, studios, and genres feature exaggerated eyes. A classic example is Sailor Moon. Usagi and company have big, expressive eyes shining with emotion that take up over a third of their face, and they're tame compared to enormous peepers on characters in Vampire Knight, Air, Kiraran Revolution, or Clanad. These stylized eyes have become an anime trope of their own, with certain eye types being associated with certain character traits. If you're looking at characters with big, open eyes, they're probably one of two things. One, they're sweet, innocent, enthusiastic about life, and earnest about love. Think Eru Chitanda from Hioka. She's always curious about mysteries, and it shows. Like, look at those eyes. This usually applies to kids and young women. Or two, on occasion, young men who made pacts with the devil. Yeah, don't you hate it when your eyes get big whenever you sell your soul to the devil. It's the worst, trust me. Great example is Seal Phantom Eye. Look at those lashes. Generally speaking, the smaller the eyes, the crueler the character. Assassins, villains, jaded cads, and bullies all tend to have smaller, more narrow eyes compared to the heroes. Examples are Full Metal Alchemist's father, who's an asshole god that happens to look like Ed's dad, Hunter Hunter's Ahsoka, who should have probably been on some kind of watch list. Oh, I just can't wait to break you. And Vicious from Cowboy Bebop, whose name is literally Vicious. Also, he's fond of church shootouts, so. And the list goes on. Of course, for every rule, there's an exception. To Yu Yu from Naruto has eyes about the same size of the protagonist. That is until she reaches the second stage of her seal. And yo, not to be off, but I always thought she looked way more attractive in the second state. I don't know if that says a lot about me. I have a whole video on my channel where I talk about liking anime girls, a uh, slight plug. Actually, I don't know if you should watch that. Whatever, my, my reputation's ruined anyway. Moving on, which brings us to another rule. If your eyes have blackened out pupils, you're probably vile, possessed, or some combination of the two. Risotto Negro, Dark Naruto, Majin Buu from Dragon Ball Z, Tokyo Ghouls, Ghouls, they're all super evil, and boy, can you see it in their beady, beady eyes. But again, there are exceptions. My Hero Academia's Mina Ashido is a bubbly, friendly acid queen, and One Punch Man's Genos is a virtuous cyborg. Their black eyes aren't evil, just a clear signal that they're not completely human. Okay, in Mina's case, it's probably a reference to her hero name, Alien Queen, which is a reference itself to Ridley Scott's Alien movies, but you, know, you get the point. If you got black eyes, you're probably like a little, little different. So why eyes? We know that eyes carry a lot of meaning in anime, but there are also some cultural factors at play that can help explain why eyes are so dang important. In 2007, a scientific study asked, were there any cultural differences in how Japan and the United States recognized emotions? Their first experiment looked at the kind of typed emoticons each country used. American faces like happy or sad changed the mouth, while Japanese emojis for happy and sad changed the eyes. For the second experiment, where researchers showed digitally modified faces with eyes and mouths showing different emotions, the results were similar. Americans generally read emotions by the mouth, and Japanese participants generally read the eyes. Scientifically, reading the eyes is a better way to tell someone's mood. It's harder to control the eyes, oh god, orbicularis oculi muscles compared to the mouse zygomatic major. Basically, for those of you not in med school, you can control your mouth more, but the eyes can't lie. So culturally, the Japanese view eyes as a stronger emotional indicator. Okay, so eyes are where the people making anime look to to read expressions and emotion. But why are they so large though? Well, it's the same reason why road signs are so large. It's easier to read something quickly if it's big and clear. Enlarging eyes makes the slightest changes in a character's emotional state easier to read. 
Plus, not everyone has super gigantic eyes. There's a whole range of sizes and styles. Studio Ghibli uses half outlined eyes with black pupils, while My Hero Academia characters have three quartered outline eyes with small colored pupils. But there's a general shorthand when it comes to eyes. They're a way to read what kind of character you're looking at and where they're at emotionally. You'll see this across all types of shows. Now that we know the why, let's dig into the how. And what better way than to dig into a history of anime eye styles? Though they had hundreds of years of magic lantern shows and cartoons, Japan began making animated films in 1917. Seitaro Kitayama, one of anime's founding fathers, said he was inspired to work after watching the Fleischer Brothers out of the Inkwell series, among other foreign cartoons. But while early anime features googly, cartoony eyes, it's not the the anime style we all think of today. In 1932's Stopping the Show, the Fleischer Brothers retooled dog character Bimbo's girlfriend into the big-eyed, squeaky-voiced Betty Boop we know today. She seems to have inspired Kenzo Masaoka, the man who introduced cell and sound recording to the animation industry. The girl in 1933's The Gang and the Dancing Girl, or Gang to Odorico, and the kidnapped geisha of 1935's Bananaemon, the Monster Exterminator, or Bananaemon Bakemono Taiji no Maki, both look pretty boop-esque. But the large, shining eyes look has uniquely Japanese origin. When people think of anime eyes, they're usually thinking of shoujo style. In the 1930s, artist and former French doll maker Junichi Nakahara emphasized eyes in a style that become known as jojoga, or lyrical illustration. Jojo means description of feelings, and big, heavily lashed, sparkly eyes expressing the love and dreams of the character get the most attention. The style was further popularized by illustrator Makoto Takahashi around 1956. The oversized eyes evoked empathy and the trait stuck as a shoujo convention. But the birth of anime eyes as we know them can be pinpointed to January 1st, 1963 with Tetsuon Atsumu, aka my boy Astro Boy, which was first broadcast as a 30-minute TV show. As TV gained popularity in Japan, anime aspired to imitate foreign live action shows, similar to how Bewitched created the entire genre of magical girls, which we already covered in a previous video. You should most definitely check that out. George Reeves' Adventures of Superman was the highest rated TV show show in Japan, and everyone was scrambling to make their own version. For Osamu Tezuka, it inspired Astro Boy in Princess Knight's secret dual life. In his autobiography, Tezuka mentions how Astro Boy's design was influenced by Mickey Mouse, mimicking shape and keeping both characters' ears on screen, and borrowed his large eyes from Betty Boop. Astro Boy was insanely popular, but the studio's cost-cutting, limited drawings, and minimized drawn lines, which of course affected the design. The 70s saw a rise in popularity of Reiji Matsumoto's space operas. These shows featured tall, slender, tragic heroines whose fragile looks mass strong wills and superpowers. Characters of shows like Captain Harlock and Galaxy Express 999 lifted the same heavy lashes as Nakahara, only this time the eyes expanded horizontally and narrowed vertically, reflecting the women's sadness. From 1978 to 79, we had two big developments in Big Eyes. Hayao Miyazaki's directorial debut, The Castle of Cagliostro, was super popular, especially Heron Clarice with her large, clear eyes barely touched at the top by black lashes. Meanwhile, artists Hideo Hazuma combined shoujo faces and Osamu-style bodies in fanzine Cybelle, stressing a cute aesthetic and creating the bishoujo or beautiful girl style. The 80s were all about bishoujo style, with shows like Ranma One Half and Urusei Yatsura, featuring sexy hijinks and enormous eyes with detailed irises. Even mecha shows got into the action, with series like Bubblegum Crisis, Mobile Suit Gundam, and Gunbuster. They paved the way for Moe, which we'll get into in a second, by featuring feminine shoujo characters in genres previously thought of as male. Bishoujo peaked with Sailor Moon, explicitly calling itself Bishoujo at the start of the 90s. But there was also the wildly influential work of Katsuhiro Otomo, creator and co-director of 1988's Akira. His style went with eyes closer to real life proportions, featuring smaller pupils and mostly lacking stylized lashes. Over the years, you can see a shortening and rounding of face styles. Eyes kept getting larger and larger while also becoming softer with no black outline or pupils. If you want to get very general, 90s characters had high high mouths, high volume hair, and were drawn with thicker lines and black pupils. The 90s also saw a shift from still divided male-female genres to less strictly gendered shows with darker themes like Neon Genesis Evangelion. 
they merged the empathetic design elements of shoujo with the action of shonen. But there were also a couple major shifts in technology and culture that also affected anime eye design at this time. Starting in the 90s, computers came into the mix with movies like Ghost on the Shell and Princess Mononoke, mixing cell animation and computer-generated images. Today, just about every anime studio has made the switch to digital animation. After the switch, most anime attempted to imitate Cell's starker and subdued look before moving towards the shinier, glossier style digital allowed. Check out these two screenshots showing the same scene in Cell and digital. You can really see the difference in this 13-year-old Pokemon episode, which was cleaned up for HD. The eyes had more shading and detail with distinct pupils. For digital animators, the sky is the limit when it comes to characters' eyes. Studios like Kyoto Animation can put a world of detail into the eyes alone. Pupil depth's gotten even deeper and more vibrant and colorful, well past the point of realism. It's all part of the moification of design. Slang for strong affection towards usually young female characters. Moe treads the line between expressing brotherly love and creepy obsession. Either way, there's no doubt it's become something designers strive to hook viewers in. And nothing will hook viewers in like deep, luminous anime eyes. A 2014 study from the Kanazawa Institute of Technology in Japan suggests that the key to successful moe is a cute, showy, and childlike character, with an emphasis on large pupils and bright colors for their hair and iris. So how did the West react? As anime fans, we can all make fun of moe tropes from time to time, and anime as an art form is no stranger to Western parody. South Park's Chin Pokemon and Good Times with Weapons episodes both mock anime style that by then had firmly established itself in the US pop culture. In Chin Pokemon, all South Park had to do to signal the switch was morph their character's pretty sizable eyes into emoji style simplification. Good Times with Weapons even had transformations and its own OP styled theme. Of course, plenty of American cartoons have taken their look and design from anime as homage, not parody. Avatar The Last Airbender so closely aped anime style that it had fans scrambling to define what exactly anime was. Other shows like Winx Club, Teen Titans, Batman Beyond, and My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, brought the anime eye look full circle. Where early American cartoons influenced Japanese animation, now anime is returning the favor. The circle is even looping back around as 2010's Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt took its look from American cartoons inspired by anime's enormous eyes and stylized bodies, like Powerpuff Girls and My Little Pony. Anime will continue to change with the demands and needs of their audience. A bold artist might completely upend convention with a new design, or way more likely, market forces will determine what gets pushed to fans. Though fans can vote with their dollars on merchandising, what's unlikely to change anytime soon is eyes returning to normal proportions. The large eyes of anime have reflected fans' wants and desires, sometimes literally, and aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Adrian, why do we have to always point out my eyes? You have, you have good eyes, man. Thank you, but it's a lot. It's fan service. Is it? If you like this video, or my eyes, consider subscribing. I'm Kurt, this is Gin the Robot, your Anime Explainer.